Hello and welcome. I'm JJ Gormley. I'm going to talk you through a, a chair yoga class today. And we'll be um, doing some strengthening work in the hips, and uh, which will mean also that we strengthen the arms. So I hope you um, enjoy it. I've got a chair here and I'll move it back in a moment and a couple of blocks and then something that you can easily slide your uh, feet on on whatever uh, floor surface you have. This is carpet and I have chair sliders or furniture sliders or you can use paper plates. If you're on hardwood surface, you can use a folded blanket or a folded towel. And um, so here's the setup. You have a chair, two blocks, which you don't um, uh, really need. If you have them, great. If not, don't worry. I'll show you how to do the movement without them. And then these are my furniture sliders. I took that screen down just a smidge. That's better. Okay. All right, so let's um, let's get started with um, just some breath work. So on the exhale, press the feet into the floor ever so slightly. Inhale, relax. Exhale, just the heels press very slightly, just more being aware of the heels. Inhale, relax. Next exhale, the balls of both feet. Inhale, relax. And then, um, you know, when you make a footprint in the sand, you've got the outer side of the feet that connect the ball of the foot to the heel. So on the next exhale, just being aware of that area. And the arches are lifted. And then next, be aware of the toes connecting in. And then you can sit back in the chair back if you like, but the more you can sit unsupported, um, this allows your spinal muscles to uh, hold you upright, which means they work a little bit. And so that's strengthening them strengthening your core. If at any time they get fatigued, because we are so used to sitting and leaning back into chair backs, by all means, just sit back and lean in, lean into the chair back. So those guys don't have to work over time. And then the more you can practice sitting forward in a chair, the more you'll help strengthen your, strengthen your core, really. All right, let's come to um, some gentle spinal movements. On the Inhale, I want to uh, take us uh, to take our elbows out and mimic the circumferential expansion of the diaphragm. And as you exhale, exhale from the belly. You can bring your hands to your belly if you like. Inhale, breathe into the front sides and back ribs. The back ribs is more difficult. See what you can do to get the breath back there. So sometimes coaxing it by starting with where it can go, easily go, which for most of us, the front ribs, and then into the side ribs. This is why I have the elbows go out. It kind of mimics that expansion. And then the last part, the most difficult part, is to get the breath into those back ribs. All right. And then let's um, do a little spinal movement here, a little back bend on the inhale and a rounded spine on the exhale. You can add that breath with this movement. So even on the back bend, breathe into the, like you're trying to breathe into your waistline area. Exhale from the belly. Inhale directly across from the belly on the back body. All right, <coughs> excuse me, it's allergy season here. Okay, 
Let's come down to the legs. We'll start with one foot at a time, one leg at a time. So bring your foot on top of whatever uh, will allow you to easily slide and slide out on the inhale and back in on the exhale. And you can add that same breath work. Inhale, expanding the rib cage circumferentially, exhaling from the belly. I'm using my hands to mimic the feel of the diaphragm. So a few times on one side and then switch it over and we'll do a few times on the other side. And back in. All right. So let's uh, go back to the first leg and um, head out on our spokes. Same breath work. We'll um, add a little back bend when you inhale the leg out and a slight rounded spine on the exhale when the leg comes back in. Different spoke. This time when we um, head back up toward the front, we're gonna push the foot into the floor. This will give the leg a little strength work. Push it into the floor, both on the way out and push, 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 even on the way back in. So you can feel those leg muscles working a little bit more. It's like the foot is in mud or something and you're really pushing against to get your leg out and push pull against that mud when you come back in. See if you can feel your leg muscles strengthening to do that work. And even do one uh, right out in front. I'm gonna do another one right out in front and then switch it over and do the same thing on the other side. First, nice and easy, just out and in, not that resistance work yet. This is just warming up the leg muscles. So before you do strength work with something, we like to just make sure you can get yourself in and out of it. <laughs> and then we'll do the strength work. So we go all the way out and then on your way back up to the top, to the front, push, push, push into the floor on the way out and on the way back. Of course, don't push it. You can feel if that bothers us ankle or knee or anything. Usually it bothers someone's knee. And um, sometimes turning the foot a little bit can ease where, uh, where the knee is grabbing. You really want the leg muscles to do the work and not get into the joint or the cartilage of the knee or anything like that. So just strengthening around that. And when you get all the way back up to the top, Maybe do a couple straight out in front. Push, 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 push. All right. So just see if you feel like you woke up some leg muscles there. And we're going to do some more uh, resistance work with the uh, hip. First, again, we'll get it used to the movement. So we're going to do some, uh, uh, get the hip rotators woken up a little bit. Come up to the tippy toes and on the inhale, roll the leg out. Exhale back in, do another one of those. Not just one, we'll do another couple of those. Inhale out, exhale back in. Let's do one more. I think that was about four altogether. About the same number on the other side. Switch it over. Inhale out, exhale in. All right. And then we'll do some strength work uh, with those hip rotators. Let's start with one where you take one leg straight and cross or stack the other leg on top and just slide the leg up slightly and turn the leg out and bring your hand to the upper side. 
and you're going to press your hand against the thigh, thigh against the hand. Exhale and then relax. And then again, press, exhaling. The two are working against each other, the hand and the thigh bone. We'll do three of those and then switch it over to the other leg. Slide the heel up slightly and turn the uh, thigh out. Hand comes to the uh, upper thigh, inner thigh. Hand and thigh pressing on the exhale is your exertion. Inhale, release. Exhale, a little exertion. Inhale, release. Let's do one more. I think we did three. All right, if you're keeping track and you need to do another one, feel free. And we'll counter pose those that leg work with um, let's do both at the same time if your chair is not tippy and you can if your chair is tippy by all means don't do that just do one at a time we'll do maybe six all together so if you're doing one at a time do three on one side and three on the other and and that is both legs out on the inhale back in on the exhale one or both legs out on the inhale you can turn the feet out sometimes if you like or in pigeon toed I think that's four, five, all right, let's do some more strength work for the hip, you know, um, how we've done lunges in the past, we'll bring our hands, interlace your hands behind the uh, back of one leg, they don't have to be interlaced, you can stack one on top of the other, but I'll have to interlace them myself. And then not rounding the shoulders. So keep your back heart in good alignment. Lean back, bringing that leg with you. See if the toes will come up. If you'd like to go deeper, bend the elbows and uh, bring that knee up. And then you're going to uh, push the leg back into your hands. Like the leg wants to go back down, but your hands are preventing it. And push the leg down from up in the hip joint. Do three presses on the exhale. Inhale, relax. Exhale, press again. Inhale, relax. Let's do one more. And then release that leg down. And we'll go over to the other side. You might change the uh, clasp of your hand to your unnatural clasp. Should feel a little funny. Back heart alignment as you bring that leg up. And then exhale, press from in the inside the hip socket, pressing and release and repeat. And then release three of those. And we'll come back and do our counters again. Out and in a couple of times. And again, you can change the turn of the foot sometimes out, sometimes in, or just keep it straight up and sometimes flex, sometimes point. Oh, the flexing feels good to me on my calves. Calves feel tight today. So I'm gonna just do that one for me. All right, so you can see though, even though we were working hip strength or in leg strength, the arms get involved with that resistance work. And so the, um, arms also get some strength work. All right, we're gonna uh, bring that leg up a little bit uh, uh, higher than we did before it was kind of below the knee. So uh, we want it to come above the knee. So you can do that in a couple of ways. One is just to slide it up above the knee. You can use your hands to help, or you can uh, start with what we did before, lifting the leg up and then cross your ankle over the other thigh and then let the leg release down. And you're not going to let it release all the way down to its max. So keep it up a little bit and interlace your hands behind the back of the thigh and let the leg press down as your hands pull up against it. Exhale, three of those. Release on the inhale and then repeat. Exhale, press. And again, pressing from the leg from inside the hip socket. Three, and then bring your hands up on the inner thigh and press 
uh, the, so the legs trying to come back up, but you're just pushing it down. Press again and again. Three of those and release. You can lift up underneath the leg. Uh, and lift it out or you can straighten the bottom leg and let that one slide out doesn't matter how you come into it second side hands interlace behind the back of the thigh three presses one more and then up on the inner thigh Release on the inhale. Two. Release on the inhale. Last one. All right. And then let's counterpose that again. Either both legs at the same time or one at a time. We'll do six again. So count, we counterpose when we've had some effort, or stress, or strain on the on a muscle. So we just uh, did some effort and stress and strain on our leg muscles. So we're kind of shaking them out now with these counterposes. And I've lost count. I think that maybe it's five or six. I'll do one more. All right, and release. All right, let's come up to the spine. And on the inhale, so um, still focus on that uh, circumferential expansion of the lower rib cage. And um, since the back is the heart most difficult, most of us can get it in the front ribs first, and then the side ribs start to come. But the back ribs is another story, and that one is difficult for most of us. And um, so, I sometimes imagine that I'm breathing into the back waist and the diaphragm actually has little threads that do come down into the lumbar spine, into your, into your low back waist. So uh, if you can imagine breathing into those little threads, I think they're called the kruka of the diaphragm. This will help your lower back. Uh, if you have lower back pain, your lower back, uh, if, when your lower back is in pain, your, your breath, uh, is affected by it and or um, you can use your breath to help your lower back pain and this is the the thing to do is to breathe into the lower back as though you can breathe into those threads of the the kruka of the diaphragm um, so we're going to use our that arm movement of the elbows winging out to remind us to get into those back ribs and even down into the waist and then exhale from the belly Inhale into the, uh, so you could breathe into your back. All right, we're gonna inhale, wing the elbows out and then the hands spread out at the end of the inhale. And then exhale, point your fingers to your belly to remind you to exhale from the belly. Inhale, wing it out. Exhale from the belly. Add a little back bend on the inhale. Exhale from the belly, rounded spine. Another one like that. All right, we're gonna go into a twist. On the next one, inhale's the same. Wing it out. Exhale, twist. That front hand's gonna to come to the belly. Usually we take it to that opposite knee. We're gonna bring it to the belly. Inhale to center. Other side. Bring it out. Let's do a couple more like that. A couple more each side, I should say. So one more each side. Then we'll go into laterals, right over. I'm going to bring that hand to the shoulder or to the belly. 
overhead. And if you have your blocks handy, you can go to the block or down the chair leg or chair rung or anything that's working for you. Last one. And straight up and relax the arms down. Cat cow. Emphasize the cow, the back bend by the shoulder blade action, squeezing those shoulder blade tips together, bottom tips. All right, and next we're, uh, we're gonna do some eye exercises, which I am gonna scoot forward for this. So you can see. You can do these with your eyes closed. I'm gonna do mine with the eyes open so you can uh, peek open, peek and see if you need to. The idea is to let the eyes move only and not the head. The head's gonna to wanna to move and if you catch it moving, and I'll probably catch mine moving, just uh, bring it back to center. <clears throat> okay, so uh, imagine your head is at the center of one of those old fashioned analog clocks. And, um, and so you're part of the clock face, the center of the clock face. So 12 o'clock is straight up. And uh, I don't know if this is mirroring or not, but uh, 11 and one o'clock are roughly here and here, 10 and two and three and uh, nine. And we're only gonna uh, go to those numbers and not the ones on the bottom half, because most of us, are looking down at our, our, our computers or cell phones and things most of the day. So those eye muscles are already well worked, but the upper ones, we rarely are using those. So we're gonna, we'll, we'll focus on those today. If you happen to know you need the other ones, you can um, you know, just sort of mirror this and do this pra that, um, practice on your own. All right, so uh, keep your head on straight <laughs> and just the eyes roll up to 12 o'clock. Take a breath there, really stretching both eye muscle, both eyes, left and right eyes, stretch up and then come back to rest at center. And then we'll take the eyes up either to uh, um, 11 or one, go straight up to 12 again, and then slide over to either going clockwise or counter. Take a breath, both eyes stretching and come back to center. Eyes go up to 12 again. Over to the other side. Both eyes stretching back to center. All right, so that was um, 11 and one. We'll now do the 10 and twos. Go always go up to noon again, or midnight, <laughs> up to 12. And then over one side or the other, 10 or two, breathe. and come to center, up to 12 again. And the other side, 10 or two. And release at center. And then the last one's three and nine. Roll up to 12 again, over to one side, whichever way you wanna go first. Both eyes stretching over, breathe. Relax at center. And the other side. Oops, we're going to go up to 12 and then all the way over. Breathing and release. All right, so those last ones at the three and nine or the 10 and two. We're gonna to put together with a, um, a head tilt, um, which we, could, we call this one the salamander. So um, feel free to watch first. I think you'll be okay to, um, for me to talk you through this, but if you wanna watch first, that's fine too. All right, so um, uh, let the ear of one side go toward the shoulder. And then we're gonna take the eyes down 
to uh, like toward that down, toward that shoulder, toward the down ear. So that's either three or nine o'clock for you. Breathe. And then keep the head there, but roll the eye straight across over to the other one, three o'clock or nine o'clock. Breathing. So this is like a salamander. They tilt their head and move their eyes around. And then rest the eyes at center and then bring the head up to center. And feel free to sh you know, shake it out if you like. We're gonna go right over to the second side. Head tilts first, ear toward the um, shoulder. And then the eyes go down, breathing. This often brings up a yawn in me, apologize for that. And then eyes to the opposite side, keep breathing. They say this is a vagus nerve reset and that often you get that yawn or um, some sort of a shift. All right, and then rest the eyes and come back to neutral. And let's go ahead and do some uh, shoulder shrugs shoulder rolls and we'll do a, um, a neck, a counter pose for the neck, uh, head straight down. Don't push it all the way down, just very easefully down and easefully up, not your full range of motion, but somewhere nice and easy range. And when you take the head up, uh, you're not trying to crease the back of the neck. You're actually trying to make the head, the neck long on the backside as well. So I kind of envision a turtle uh, stretching its head out of the shell before he looks up. Otherwise, he's going to scrape his neck on the back of a shell, right? You probably don't really do that, but I just made that. So stretching your uh, back of the neck just as much as the front of the neck when you take your chin up and then just not pushing the chin down, just nice and easefully down and a nice long neck when you take your head up. Just do two more of those. Again, not your full range of motion. Nice and easy. All right, and then come to neutral. All right, let's do um, uh, palming of the eyes. On the exhale, we'll palm. Oh, I wanted to do one more thing before this. So this um, next one is to uh, tune out the, the world, to tune out the, your senses and allow you to go inward. And so this is this um, uh, hand uh, mudra, we sometimes call this um, hear no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. Um, but it's more than that. It uh, closes all the major senses off. So um, usually when I do this on my own, I do the ears first, but I don't want to talk us through it that way because you need to hear me. So we're going to do it in reverse order. Um, and that is, you can watch first, we're gonna uh, speak no evil by closing the mouth off with the last two fingers, one on top and one on bottom. Then the middle two fingers will uh, regulate breathing. So we can't breathe out of our mouth because our mouth is closed. And this is to remind us not to pay attention to what we're smelling, but uh, you're gonna allow the uh, uh, breath to come through. And you can do alternate nostril regulation with this if you like by closing off one nostril and then and then the other. And so you'll breathe out and in one nostril and then exhale and inhale in the other nostril. So it's out and in is one breath, out and in is the next breath. And then to close the eyes off, you uh, right where the eyelashes meet the eyelid, you'll rest your index fingers there uh, to just sort of remind you to close your eyes and keep your eyes closed and tune out vision. And then the ear, this little um, flap here, it's called the tragus, you'll take your thumbs and press that in to close off your hearing. And um, we'll do that one last at the end so that um, you can, you know, not, you won't be able to hear me if you fully close that off. So um, just in case I um, end the class and you're still uh, got your ears closed, thank you for coming today. And um, uh, when you come out, you can do that palming that I just started to show a moment ago. So I'm gonna 
come out at some point. Usually my arms get tired of holding the uh, position for so long. And um, when, if your arms get tired before mine do, just uh, rest, rest until I uh, start talking again. And otherwise, if you're still in the mudra and I came out um, and maybe you, uh, you will join us while we're doing palming or as I said, just uh, namaste, thank you for coming. All right, let's see. I guess I don't need to get back up in the chair. All right, so we'll start by closing the um, mouth and then the nose. And just keep the nostrils open for now. I'll talk you through that breath in a moment. And then the eyelids. And then you can um, keep the thumbs ready to close off the ears or partially close them just so you can hear me uh, talk you through that breath regulation once again. So just take a couple of breaths and allow yourself to feel like you're tuning the world out and coming to within and paying attention to some people feel their heartbeat. Some people get visual uh, on the, you know, sort of the inside of their eyelids. Some people go into a nice state of consciousness. So just see what's going to happen for you. And then on an exhale, close one nostril off and let the exhale go out one side and back in that side. And then close that one off and open the other side and let it go out that side and back in that side. And so that'll continue like that, out and in one side and then out and in the other side. And whenever you're ready, you can close your ears fully. So uh, if you'd like to do a couple of cat cows before we do add on the palming, feel free. Exhale, rounded spine. Inhale, a little back bend. And then I'm going to add on the palming on the exhale, releasing that on the inhale. And repeating.
And if comfortable and you'd like to stay in palming for a breath or more, feel free. And then slowly releasing. Hmm. So that uh, one that we did closing off all the senses, uh, you can hum while you're doing that. And um, some people really love that, uh, the vibrations that creates and some say it helps with their sinuses and just their ability to tune inward and um, so you can add that on if you would like. I didn't today because um, I didn't remember until I got into it and then you wouldn't have been able to hear me. <laughs> so thank you for coming. Namaste. Have a wonderful day, wonderful week. Thank you.